Good evening. Welcome to our October 5th, 2021 City Council meeting. It is 7.01 p.m. Meeting is now in session. Tonight's invocation will be led by Pastor Matt Chavez from One and All Church, and Councilmember Tabatabai will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. Would you join me in prayer? Lord Jesus, we thank you just for the opportunity to be here tonight, God. We thank you for health that we can be here, Lord, and, and we, we're grateful. And Lord, we thank you just for your wisdom that you continue to give us direction, guidance. Lord, and I just pray a special blessing over all of our leaders here tonight, God. As, as we know it's tough uh, when we're called to a life of service. But Lord, we ask you for your blessings upon their families, their marriages, their children. Lord, and uh, because we know when, when things are well at home, Lord, they're well, they're well as well to be able to serve even better, God, and to serve our community, to serve our city. And uh, we're grateful, Lord, that all that you're doing, God, and we thank you for your blessings upon us, Lord, and we continue to ask for your guidance, especially when we're loving on people, loving on our community, loving on, on the homeless, or loving on our neighbors, and, and so many businesses, Lord, that we're asking for favor, God, as we continue to not just survive, but thrive, God. We thank you, God, for your blessings, and we, everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. We can face the flag, right hand over your heart, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Assistant City Clerk, roll call, please. Good evening, Mayor. Council Member Tabatabai? Present. Councilman Wu? Here. Councilwoman Diaz? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Castellanos? Here. Mayor Lopez Viado? Present. City Attorney, is there anything to be reported out of closed session? Nothing to report out, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay. On to presentations. Testing. So this is a proclamation for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, hence pink today. I'd like to invite Erica Taylor from the West Covina Police Department up front. So breast cancer is the most common cancer among women in the United States, except for skin cancer. Over 281,000 women and 2,650 men in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer, and more than 43,000 women and 530 men will die from the disease. Death rates from breast cancer have been declining since about 1989, in part due to earlier detection through screening, increased awareness, and continually improving treatment options. Therefore, as mayor and on behalf of the entire city council, we do hereby proclaim the month of October 2021 as National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and if you'd like to speak on its behalf. And thanks for wearing pink, too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, to do, this is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and as such, West Covina Police Department participates in the Pink Patch Project. Pink Patch Project started about 2013, where one agency took their shoulder patches and made them pink for awareness. I think 2015, it was Irwindale who caught on to that and it just lit fire. And currently we have well over 500 agencies that participate in the Pink Patch Project and it's almost become like trading cards that we want to trade patches. Mm -hmm. But these are our way of raising funds to give to the City of Hope for breast cancer research. So we will have our pink patches, which are for sale for $10. And then we will have some other items that we'll put up on our social media. We're still waiting for them to come in to be shipped. So um, pay attention to our social media and you'll see our pink patches and some bottle openers and maybe some t-shirts too. Well, thank you. Um... We'd also like to mention that October 15 is National Mammographic Day. So uh, women, I believe after 40, you can get your mammograph, mammogram done. And so that detects breast changes. So, and therefore, this 
I'd like to make the presentation and we'll take a quick photo. And actually, can we see the badge? We'll take one out. And I'd like to make a purchase of one of them. <laughs> I'd like one too. Okay. Yeah. She knows where to find us when we make those purchases. Thank you. Oh, let me give this to you. you. I'll give you my after. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is the Proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I'd like to invite Diane Franklin from the West Covina Police Department to the front. Home should be a place of warmth, unconditional love, tranquility, and security. However, for many families, home is tainted with violence and fear. Domestic violence is not only affects those who are abused, but also has a substantial effect on family members, friends, coworkers, other witnesses, and the community at large. A coalition of organization has emerged to confront directly the crisis. Law enforcement agencies, domestic violence, hotlines, battered women and children's shelters, healthcare providers, churches, and the volunteers that serve those entities are helping the effort to end domestic violence. Therefore, I would like to also present the Domestic Violence Awareness Proclamation. And if you have a few words to say. Oops, I'm sorry. Thank you. I am so very proud to be a part of West Covina Police Department. We are one of three stations that actually have their own advocate. Uh, and I have been here since 1999. So I'm really grateful for the city to keep me. Um, the last year, of course, have been very difficult for victims of domestic violence, but things are starting to get back to normal. Um, we have a support group. We have individual counseling. We follow the victims through the court system. Um, we give referrals with money for relocations and keeping them safe in restraining orders. Um, so again, I'm so extremely proud of West Covina in the way that we take care of our victims and see that they heal. So I just wanted to say thank you. And if you are aware, during the whole COVID stay at home, uh, domestic violence did increase and we wanted to thank you for taking care of our residents during that um, time so on that behalf we'd like to honor with this proclamation And we have the Proclamation for National Fire Prevention Week. We'd like to invite Ryan Bell from the West Covina Fire Department to the front. The city is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting West Covina. Home fires killed more than 2,770 people in the United States in 2019. According to the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, the fire departments in the United States responded to 339,500 home fires. Smoke alarms send smoke well before you can, alerting you to danger in the event of fire in which you may have as little as two minutes to escape safety. The City of West Covina first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education, which by chance they did have the fire prevention at Station 2. Um, the council did attend and we greatly appreciate giving that to the community. That being said, we'd like to also give you the National Fire Prevention Proclamation and anything you'd like to say? Uh, yeah, so every year NFPA comes out with a new uh, theme that they want to draw attention to. Uh, this year is learn the sounds of fire safety. Uh, that particularly draws attention to your smoke alarms in the house uh, with more people working from home and, and students being in the home. NFPA wants to draw your attention to the sounds that the uh, smoke alarm makes. Um, a lot of times they're making sounds in the background and people are unaware that that means that you need to change the batteries in them or you need to get them replaced. Um, and for those in the community that came out last week uh, or last weekend, we really appreciate uh, everyone coming out. If you missed it, uh, hopefully you can come next year. Thank you. Yep. 
We will now move to oral communication. If anyone would like to address the council, please fill out a yellow speaker card and submit it to the assistant city clerk. Assistant city clerk, how many speakers do we have tonight? We have two speaker cards, Mayor. Our first speaker is John Shoemaker, followed, followed by Muntu. Hi. These are the comments that I thought a city manager would give at next week's uh, State of the City dinner. Hello, I'm David Carmony. Welcome to Big League, Dr uh, I mean, the West Covina Sportsplex. How many of you attended the great West Covina Sportsplex reopening on July 3rd? Well, if you did not, you should have been there. We expected around 2,500 people, and we had, wait for it, wait for it, 100, well, maybe 75. We had so much food left over that we're serving it here tonight, so enjoy. This has been a great year for me as the city manager, not so sure for the city. At least I held on to my job for another year. Financially, we increased our reserves $8 million, aha, to the critics. A little more about that later. The city borrowed $204 million at 3.71% for pension obligations, not close to the West Coast Unified rate of 223 Hey, as Tony Wu said, we did beat South Del Monte in rates, and they're not even on the list of financially troubled cities. You know, the dirty dozen. How did West Coast Unified do so well? They had, had a great superintendent senior management, but some of the board are now trying to be just like the city of West Covina. Good luck in catching us. You started by having competent leadership. We have Tony Wu in his majority. We did pay down our pension obligations, $187 million from the 204 borrowed. You may wonder why the difference. How do you think we ended up with an increase in our reserves? It would be hard for anyone, including me as the city manager, to say things are going well. We had shown a $9 million decrease. It's bad enough that we have one critic constantly pointing out how 2019-2020 we had revenue of $100 million but spent 116. The West Covina Sportplex is now open a few hours on weekends. If, if someone is willing to rent three of our six fields, hey, please do not bring up the fact that other BLDs are open every day of the week, generating tax revenue for their cities. We're doing it better. At least that's what I was told to say. Right, Tony? Now to our other accomplishments. They're not as, all as good as the ones mentioned before, but hey, you can't strike out every time. Do you like the metaphor? We're at a baseball softball facility. You cannot strike out every time. Get it? The city has worked diligently to prove the old saying wrong. December 2020 and later, Tony Wu got headlines around the country saying we're going to open our own health department by July 21st. We're going to do it better, faster, cheaper than the county. Although our fee schedule is the same as the county's, kind of hits the cheaper part. We did not meet our goal. Why? We don't have a clue on how to do it. So we hired outside consultants. Who did we hire? We hired an engineering firm. You really don't think you hire medical experts, doctors, public health experts, nurses, and people familiar with running the health department, do you? Besides, they'd keep asking how much or worse, keep telling us how much it's going to cost to run a health department, which goes to my next accomplishment. We have not told anyone how much it will cost. The reason is simple. We do not know. This whole health department fiasco has done one thing. It united many in our city against us. See, we did accomplish something, uniting the city and agreeing to our incompetence. Fortunately for us, the only group less competent than our city leadership is the group trying to gather signatures. Now to our homeless program. We have a homeless program? Yes, we do have a homeless program that we passed in 2018. I, as city manager, didn't even know, so don't worry, neither did the council. One member on the council even voted for the program. I'm required to make a report each year. Obviously, not done that either. We have an extreme high-density housing development going in on Vincent. 
at an old school site instead of the headquarters for Penske at that site. I mean, headquarters city is so 1960s. I would like to give an update this year, for this year, 2021. That is why we are here. <laughs> you and I both know that's not going to happen. Heck, 2020-2019 results were not published until March of 2021, nine months late. I'm a master at de deception and delusion, but not even David Copperfield could turn our senior leadership into capable ones capable of doing their jobs. Amazon is coming to West Covina. Yes, there are concerns about traffic noise pollution. Residents are against it. Who cares what residents want? They're in District 1 anyway, not part of the Wu majority. We need the money to keep filling the holes in our budget created by the Tony Wu majority. You may say, well, fix the city. Who do you think I am? Houdini? Thank you. Moon 2, followed by Steve Bennett. Uh, I'd like to mention that in my family, there's never been domestic violence. And my kids always knew that we loved them. And that's all we do. We just loved our kids and they could do us safe, you know. But uh, I'm here to uh, address it directly uh, and respectfully the Honorable Judge Pia Navarro, uh, the acting uh, commissioner at a Adel Men's Juvenile Court in Monterey Park. I would like to say to him that because you were deceived by the representatives of the DCSF, as a result, you failed to protect my family. I ask that you see to it as to what really took place for the past 10 years. My kids were abducted by the TCSF 10 years ago, and uh, I still don't know the reason why today. Um, uh, another, also, I would like to address the presiding judge at uh, the same uh, 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 other men's judge, juvenile court, that perhaps the judge should make, them, should make himself accessible to the public so I can talk to the public and tell the public actually what the court, what's the goal, you know, as far as, you know, the kids being taken. And, you know, because, you know, you know it's solved problems. I, I've never, I've never I, I only hear about him, the presiding judge. And uh, 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 Judge Navarro, he was once at the court, uh, uh, taking place, uh, um, actually the judge who usually sits at the court was not available that, that day, and uh, Judge Navarro came about, and he asked the, he had some questions of which he was lied to. I know he was lied to. And so for the past 10 years, we haven't lived with our kids in the same, under the same roof. And, and I know most of you are, are parents here, and we have kids, and you, Please, you can imagine what it feels like. I, I, I've never had my kids. I would never. I want the best for them, education. I want, if, if they don't have the best education like every child, they're going to be dead class citizens. I don't want that to happen to my kids. So, please, thank you. Steve Bennett. Good evening, City Council, Mayor, City Council members, staff. You know, as a resident, we, um, well, kind of a community activist, I guess you can call me at times, we tend to get emails from residents. Um, sometimes you're in email chains, sometimes you're in, you know, there's all kinds of communications. You guys get a lot of those as well, and I'm sure some of you got them before you were at Council. So tonight I'm actually going to read an email um, that I received from a uh, other resident. So this is not my words, this is coming from a resident in the city. Um, and I felt that uh, considering State of the City is coming up, this was kind of poignant. So just, again, wanted to let you know. It, uh, it starts out as a salutation, of course, but then it says, uh, what city manager doesn't get, or the city council for that matter, is that the people of West Covina do not like paying for catered meals for the city staff, period. I don't give a hoot if it is for morale building or not. 
If they want to have a party, then they should all chip in and pay for it themselves and attend those parties on their own time after business hours, not during. City manager makes well over $1,000 per day in salary, and for we taxpayers to then pay him for two hours of party time is unacceptable. You hit the nail on the head when you pointed out that the city staff, including the city manager and city council, do not care because the taxpayers are on the hook for the bill. City manager argues that the money spent, it's a budgeted item, approved by the city council, so it matters little. The city council should reverse that position at the next council meeting. Considering the high salaries paid to city employees and considering the fact that city, is, uh, city hall is only open four days a week and considering that many city staff jobs come with lifetime pensions, I think that morale building is enough. Enough already. Time to tighten up the belt. Have the city's finances in the forefront of every decision. If the city staff feels like they are being treated mean, then let them go somewhere else to work. We will not miss them. They should have their next party at the city manager's house on his dime, on his time. They argue that it isn't that much money, considering, in my opinion, one dime of taxpayer money for a third grade Halloween party is too much. The arrogance of this once seemingly humble man is astounding, and therein lies the source of great many problems for our city. I'm tired of hearing what other cities do. This is West Covina, not Baldwin Park, El Monte, or Pico Rivera. But admittedly, it is more and more difficult to tell them apart. City manager will continue to spend frivolously on nonsensical events like this until he is reined in by the city council. But I'm not holding my breath. The council members attend these taxpayer funding sh funded shindigs too. The email I thought was kind of poignant considering we're talking about state of the city. And uh, I know some of you have a lot of things to do on your desk, so you don't really want to pay attention to me face to face. But um, the interesting thing about this is the person who sent it was Councilman, Councilwoman Elliott's husband. And it was sent in 2016. It's funny how the problems still around. My question, though, to be very honest, I don't care so much about all of that. I want to know, Councilman Tabatabai, he publicly stated he paid for his own tickets to the city, of, you know, state of the city, correct? Did you? Did you? Thousand dollar table. Thousand dollar table. Good for you. I'm actually impressed, Dario. Thank you very much. Did you pay for yours or is the city paying for it? It's usually how I roll. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I see the big, you know, truck out there. He's got the Hummer. It's I know. my only ride. I know. I got you. I wish I could afford it, um, but I appreciate it. It's probably the first time we've ever communicated at a council meeting. It's, I, I don't really hear you talk much, so thank you. It's kind of nice. Um, forgot you had a voice. Did anyone else pay for their own? Is it now of your business. Hmm. Is it on your 700 form? On your business. Good to know. I, I just was curious if the uh, hypocrisy of the fact that now this person's wife is sitting on the council if she paid for her own. And I think that's, that is the public's business because it is taxpayer money, Tony. That's probably the mistake that you're making is, is we as residents, this kind of stuff matters. Hypocrisy matters. So, yeah, no offense, it does matter. I, I don't mind the recognition for the employees. A lot of them deserve it. They work their butts off. Absolutely unrecognized in some cases. I completely support that. But think about the fact that one resident now has his wife on the council, and she's not even trying to make those changes. Good night, guys. He can't accept. All right, audience, please. We're still in session. Continue. Next speaker. R. Robinson. can't top what you've already heard, so I'll just do my best. Uh, Bill Robinson, resident, uh, I wanted to give you a heads up on an issue coming to you soon. Uh, you're going to need an Amazon EIR, and uh, please uh, suspend the state of local emergency. Uh, a regional warehouse will soon appear in District 1 and 2 at uh, North we uh, Northwest uh, part of West Covina, uh, 
if you don't quash the approval from the Planning Commission last night, uh, uh, the traffic and uh, the community's peace of, of mind at that in that part of the city is just uh, uh, going to go up in smoke. Uh, uh, it, it would be better to use the site for an Aspen Village type of arrangement, which you've got across the street from West Covina High School. That would be a lot more compatible with the uh, uh, existing community instead of the zone change. Uh, uh, take time to verify the uh, project sponsor's statements by uh, visiting the uh, existing site on Rosemead so you can so you can see the monstrosity that uh, that we're about ready to invite into our city. Uh, you could organize uh, community workshops and discussions and and uh, don't ignore the request for uh, EIR. Uh, anyway, relying on the sponsor's statements uh, is, uh, is not going to protect us. And uh, uh, we've, uh, I guess we elected you to try to uh, uh, move, move, move us forward in a better direction. Uh, I was discussing this uh, state of affairs with a former mayor, and he says, oh, we're not on the s same page, Bill. Uh, tough luck. I don't, I don't live in that part of the city, so uh, uh, you, you could put the city's homeless uh, uh, behind the wheel of an Amazon truck, and then they could rent an apartment, tend to a room, and carpool to work, and that'll solve the city's homeless problem. So uh, anyway, he and I agreed to disagree. Uh, I'd like to jump to a, a new subject, uh, subject number two. Uh, uh, it's time to, to uh, lift the, the city's state of emergency. It's gone, uh, it's gone too far and too long, and uh, perhaps residents want to get back to a normal life uh, plus, uh, it restores the, uh, the balance between the local legislator, you, and the administration. Uh, right, uh, you need to reclaim your powers as a council because right now uh, you're uh, reactive instead of pro proactive. You just rubber stamp the uh, the, city, the uh, consent calendar that the. Uh, that the uh, manager presents to you. You need to uh, step up and become a real uh, local legislature. So uh, I also have an obsession about the health department. So uh, I'd just like to say in the last 20 months, uh, um, the, the, the uh, United States uh, surveillance state is emerging and it's been proven that uh, we're all lab rats and we have no rights to uh, bodily integrity and, and we must uh, uh, submit to uh, vaccine mandates so, uh, soon. Uh, one size fits all. Um, many people are eager to, uh, to submit to uh, twice a year booster shots for the rest of their life, even though, even though the vaccine doesn't work. Uh, the proof of what I'm saying, it, you just have to look at the state of Israel. Uh, they're the most vaccinated people on the planet. And uh, if we had done nothing, nothing at all, the crisis just would have uh, withered away. But instead, our uh, system of government is, is, is being severely threatened. Our, our rights, our rights and the Constitution, we're, we're headed towards uh, governance by uh, uh, medical tyranny and the World Health Organization. Thank you. So I'd like to object to that. Thanks. Wait, five minutes really flies fast. When you're... No other speakers? There are no, no more speaker cards, Mayor. Okay. Oh. Okay. Go ahead and submit the... Uh, at, at the mic and go ahead and submit the speaker card to your assistant city clerk, please. I'll take your question. 
Thank you. Not a resident of West Covina, but I am concerned because there's some rental properties in which I'm involved with between Vincent and Sunset. And it seems that it's a regular occurrence, but not all the time, that large items that are very difficult to, uh, uh, well, what can you say? Put them out of sight where, well, one, it's not an eyesore, second of all, that it's a hazard of somebody, either because they're being mean or they're, however, of pushing these things out on North Garvey and someone's going around the corner and they hit these things. And um, someone had mentioned previously, there's something of a development on Vincent, the former school site. Is there, is that, uh, is that actual something that's proposed or is it gonna happen? So you manager will answer. He'll, he'll add to the answer. No. After you he allows finish. you to oh, speak. Is that after you finish. So you have, um, oh, excuse me, sir. Uh, this is your time to go ahead and speak everything you can. And, okay, and, so anyways, and after he'll address um, picking, all the... Anyways, a few days ago, I picked up a refrigerator, a large couch, a mattress, and a dresser. Now, these things are getting put somewhere between the line of Murata, more so, and uh, Vincent. I think it's 1015, 1031, 1029, the condo, townhomes next door, and, which is Poxon. And I'm at the, the one, it's probably easy to discard. And second, it seems it's happening like closer towards the weekend when people probably go looking for vacant rentals. And it seems that this is a pattern, maybe for someone else with units someplace else, saying, you don't want to live around here because, you know, there's refrigerators being discarded, mattresses, dressers, uh, you know, stuff that you know, takes two, two people to put in the back of a truck. And um, I called, I, I looked up a message that was Rosario Diaz. It seems the graffiti in that area seems to be going up. It might be because it's summertime and kids were out of school and idle lines. But, um, but it just seems, it's, it, to me, it's occurring more often. That's all I have to say. Thank you. He'll address all the, uh, so he'll answer everything. Instead everybody. of calling the city council, I picked the things up myself, brought them over to, over to 91746 and figure all Western Waste, and when they get around to picking it up, they get around to picking it up. Feel free to also use Go Request app. There's an app that um, you can put all those issues, and then they'll respond. The city will take care of it. But he'll, uh, our city manager yeah, will go ahead yeah, and answer it's, everything it's, else. It's, well, like I said, it's a health hazard. It's an eyesore. It's a safety issue. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm the person that's probably a few people are doing it regularly. Can you provide the question address, okay, to city managers? We well, will the ones you. I picked up, let's see, today's Tuesday. On Thursday, we're a little bit past Poxon between Murata at the property line at 1015 and 1031. And another one kind of in the beginning of 1029. West, you know, Garvey North. And then uh, when you get past Murata, you know, there's other items, but they aren't as large as refrigerators, discarded couches, mattresses, uh, older dresser sets and furniture. That Some of it looks like it still could be used if you took it to the Goodwill or Salvation Army. Some of it looks like somebody actually went to it with a sledgehammer. Anyways, that's, I used up my two minutes. I've never been to one of these. <laughs> Thank you and welcome. Thank you. No more speaker slips, Mayor. Okay, so now for the city managers re um, to respond to the public comments that was discussed today. Go ahead. Good evening, Mayor and Council and members of the public. I'll try to briefly respond to the comments and suggestions that we got tonight. And thank our speakers for all being here. Um, Mr. Shoemaker, covered a number of topics, um, the pension bonds that the city was involved with comes up often in these chambers. And I think for good reason, because it was really an important financial tr transaction for the city. One of the practices that we've employed has been that we've attempted to assess and quantify the city's problems and to address them in a direct way. With respect to the city's unfunded pension liability, 
the city was carrying this liability at CalPERS at a rate of 7%. And so we looked to see if we could find another option that would allow us to address that issue and, and save money in the general fund. So the city went to the rating agencies and got Standard & Poor's to give the city an A-plus bond rating, which was quite significant, enabled us to issue bonds which were competitively purchased. And by that transaction, we were able to achieve a net present value savings of north of $52 million, $52.7 million. It's an interest rate transaction, so we dropped the effective interest rate from 7% at CalPERS to a private transaction all in at 3.72%. We kept the tenor the same, the time term is the same, so we didn't increase the debt or the time, and um, we thought that was a, a very good transaction. We think that once the annual CAFR, Consolidated Annual Financial Reports, are reflected in the state auditor's system, we will make good gain in their major criterion by which they evaluate the city's position. Um, the general fund reserves that the city have, which as the speaker mentioned, have in fact um, increased nearly doubled. Um, we think we've brought down pension costs. We think the pension obligations themselves, while they've remained the same, have, have decreased because we've got them at a, at a better interest rate, which affects the city's debt burden. So we think we've made really good progress in that area. Um, second speaker had a number of comments and suggestions or questions about um, a matter that's pending in the criminal justice system. Mr. Tu, if he's still here, I would encourage him to speak directly with our chief of police who's here tonight. Um, he's in the room. And while we won't, as a city, interfere in a, in a criminal matter, we can certainly ascertain status and provide that kind of information and are help, happy to do so. So the chief is here. Um, Mr. Tu, if you'd please speak with our, our chief of police. Um, Mr. Bennett highlighted our upcoming State of the City Employee Recognition event, which is next Thursday. Um, a lot of questions about who's paying. Um, it felt a little personal <laughs> once or twice there. I promised Mr. Bennett as regards the city manager, I think he mentioned me, that as soon as it was put out, I paid my own way as I do. I don't, I don't want there to be any question about that. Mr. Robinson um, mentioned the Amazon hearing. Our planning commission has had two public hearings, legally noticed public hearings on an Amazon delivery center. The first one was a couple weeks ago. The most recent one was last night. I attended both. The commission ultimately um, approved the project with some recommendations to the council. And that public hearing will be scheduled before this body, before the city council for the 19th, October 19th. So that hearing is is scheduled and is coming right up. Um, there was a question about the health department. We continue to provide updates at this meeting in the city manager's report. I don't think I have any further updates since our last meeting. The state has assigned three high-ranking officials from the California Department of Public Health to work with the city's application. Because it hasn't been done in more than 100 years, they're developing kind of a two-part process. One is an application by which this city or any city or any county could apply to create its own health departments. They're, they're creating an application process. And secondly, they're promulgating regulations under which a newly created health department would operate. Those regulations are nearly final. They've moved from the director's office at CDPH um, to the head of health and human services at, in Sacramento. Um, we haven't seen those regulations yet, and when they are published, um, we'll take a close look at the regulations, and I'm sure I'll want to offer some comments to the state. Um, we've been off offering just general suggestions to them in terms of, of what those will look like, but again, we haven't seen the regulations. Once they're out, we'll disseminate that information broadly. Um, Mr. Kautsky, thanks for coming tonight. Um, I'll follow up on those questions of the bulkies, the illegally disposed items. Um, we're fortunate here with Athens Services as our franchise waste hauler that we have unlimited weekly bulky item pickup curbside. So any property owner can make an arrangement for that by calling them or by going online. Um, I can tell you as a homeowner, it's really easy. They make it really convenient to get rid of all those things you described, um, refrigerators or washing machines or couches or beds or who knows what. 
but but it's included in our rate payers rate system, so it's free for, for that use. And um, if you see something that somebody just involuntarily or voluntarily placed where it doesn't belong, if you'll contact us, we'll come get it. Right now, our crews, our public works crews, they're averaging, I think they said, two 40-yard bins a week of this kind of thing that just gets dumped in our town. And our goal is to keep the city really clean. We do have an iPhone app. If you want to download that, um, the Go Request app for West Covina, it's a pretty simple transaction. You can submit a picture, which then ties it on a geolocator to the exact location. And our system will get back to the person that turns in the concern, be it a bulky item or a graffiti or whatever it is, with a disposition and a resolution of the item. Graffiti is, some weeks it feels like it's the bane of our existence. But we're um, doing our very best. Our graffiti truck had a mechanical problem this week, and the very day it went down, I felt it. Because our, our public works person that drives that truck is as busy as can be. Just busy as a puppy in a room full of rubber balls. He's constantly chasing those now. I think right now he's averaging north of 200 graffiti covers in a weekend. So it's, it's, it's out of control and doing our very best to keep up with it. But if you'll continue to report to us those, um, those eyesores, when you see them, we'll, we'll tend to them, we'll take care of it. And I think that's all I have tonight for public comments. Okay. Um, maybe we should have Athens send out a, a notice, a reminder for all the uh, residents that they can have this bulky item pick up weekly because some residents still believe it's only four times a year or they have that one year spring. So if Athens can just disseminate the information out as a reminder. I'll see to it we do that as a, as a bill insert and as a um, social media push as well. We'll get that word out all as right. a reminder. Thank you. Uh, now for the city manager report. Go um, good evening again. I've got just a couple items to update some status about a couple of things. Um, one item I wanted to make mention of, the council is aware, we had designated um, as part of the budget, there's an approved project as part of the budget, a million dollars for a job training partnership with the San Gabriel Valley Conservation Corps. And we're pretty excited about it. We had a plant pallet and a, a plan um, prepared by a, a landscape engineering firm. And we're making um, good gain against this, this project. We're going to execute a memorandum of understanding and interlocal agreement as a government-to-government -government ent entity. Um, this is fresh as of today. But our major priority medi medians will be Grand Avenue. There's, there's nine areas on that in a 1.1-mile section. Azusa Avenue, Glendora Avenue, Vincent Avenue, Sunset Avenue, Amar Road, and West Covina. We're looking at worst first, and we think these are the ones that will have the most impact, um, in most cases, uh, city limit to city limit. The contract is in preparation in the city attorney's office. I'm reviewing a draft of it as of today. We'll probably execute it within the next week or so. And then I expect that these will be implemented. We'll see um, things growing within 10 or 11 months. Um, so it's a, it's a partnership with the San Gabriel Valley Conservation Corps. And um, if anyone's interested in the details of this plan, they're welcome to call my office and we'll provide those. And we'll, we'll put this up on the website as well. I wanted to make mention of a couple upcoming events. Um, as was mentioned next week, um, October 14th at the Sportsplex, um, we're gonna kind of have a two for one. We're gonna tell a state of the city story and we're gonna recognize our our employees and, and pass out some recognitions, um, which hasn't been done in a while. If anyone's interested in that, um, you're welcome to see us about uh, tickets for that event. A couple other um, upcoming events. I'm gonna host a town hall meeting next Monday on the subject of um, recycling waste diversion regulations. I'm expecting this won't be the most popular thing we've ever done, but it's necessary. It's a state law that takes effect in January. We might get a reprieve. It might um, give an extension of some kind. I don't want to rely on that, so I want to be ready. But we're going to visit those issues in terms of what items go into which bin, some major questions the community is going to have to decide. The way it's looking now is we'll be putting the food waste into the recycle bin. It's going to come at a cost. We're going to talk about those issues in these chambers 
um, next Monday at 6.30. So if anyone's interested, please, please come. There is a Filipino American Heritage Month event at the Plaza West Covina with a ceremony at 2 o'clock on Saturday the 23rd. And we're planning a Halloween event 4 to 6 p.m. also at the Plaza West Covina on the um, 31st. That's all I have this evening. Oh, questions? Is the, is the Halloween event on Saturday the 30th or Sunday the 31st? I'm so sorry. I do believe it's um, that Saturday, but I will. Nice catch, Council Member. It's, it's the 30th. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to. Yeah. It'd be a day late. Yeah, you, I don't want to miss the candy. You don't want to miss your candy. Okay. Okay, uh, yes, sir. I want to add on, okay, on the 14th, the stay of the city, but on 16, 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we have a Filipino American Heritage, okay, month celebration. We have about hundreds of vendors will be in the sportplex. I think we have a flyer. I think city need to promote this. I think that's what people are complaining about a lot of events. A lot of people don't know. So if we can notify, okay, and with this big event in our sportplex with hundreds of vendors and RPs, our work, okay, and we'll come to everybody to enjoy the whole day event, celebrate about the multiculture of all different kind of food. So I think okay, everybody will come. And I think Mayor, you're going to make a speech at 10 o'clock, right? Okay, so thank you for that reminder. Um, we will do our best to also try and publicize that one better and do a better job of putting that out, word about, out about that one. As soon as possible. That's already next week. <laughs> next weekend. City Manager, if I could. Um, so the Halloween event is on Sunday, the October 31st. All right. I stand re-corrected. Re <laughs> I think that's all I've got. Thank you. Okay. All right. On to the consent calendar. Council, is there anything you'd like to pull from the consent calendar? Okay, about the number four. Um, yeah, I'll pull the number four. I don't think we have a representative, but I'd like to discuss it briefly. Okay. Um, anything else? No? I'm, I'm not pulling, but I'm a no on number two. Okay. Oh, which one? Number two, number but I'm not pulling. Okay. okay. Um, so do I have a motion to approve the consent calendar one through four with the exception of four and no on number two? So move. I'll second that. No, I'm on number two with Councilman Tabak. Yes, so I have a motion by Councilman Wu, a second by Councilwoman Diaz for items one through three, with a no on item two for Councilmember Tabak to buy. Before I take roll, I'm going to read the ordinances that we're adopting into the record. Okay. Ordinance number 2486, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of West Covina, California, adopting zone change number 21-01, creating the Auto Plaza Overlay Zone. Ordinance number 2487, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of West Covina, California, approving code amendments number 21-01, related to the Auto Plaza Overlay Zone standards. Council Member Tabatabai. Aye, with a no on two. Correct, thank you. Councilman Wu? Aye. Councilwoman Diaz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Castellanos? Aye. Mayor Lopez Viado? Aye, motion passes, 5 0. Uh, on to item number four, pulled by Mayor Pro Tem Castellanos. Proceed. Good evening. Thank you, Kelly, for being up there. Uh, well, we don't have a rep from Union Station here. Correct? That's correct. You, you, you communicate with them? Yes. Uh, I guess if you could just give us an update and overview of what kind of benefit this has provided us um, since its inception, because I know it's some, this program is something I've heard of often, but I don't see progress with a homeless situation. It seems to me like a charade, very disappointing. And, and um, just more generally, outside of this Union Station agreement, but it, um, we recently had an incident over underneath the Barranca uh, uh, underpass on the 10 in Barranca. Uh, a repeat of a little makeshift home being created there. So I want to know if this Union Station services contract can help us in any way to mitigate that or anything at all. Because I'd just like to have some insight as sure. to what they're doing. 
Well, when we, uh, we developed a homeless plan in uh, 20, 2018, one of the strategies that we, uh, we were looking to address was to bring a, a coordinated entry system out to the San Gabriel Valley. That's a, um, a HMIS system where uh, folks' information is put in there and you're able to connect them to services. These are people experiencing homelessness. And so when we would um, have folks out here uh, we would have to direct them to Pasadena or downtown Los Angeles to get them into the system to connect them to services. And so that was seen as a gap out in the San Gabriel Valley. And that was one of the strategies that uh, was adopted in the homeless plan. And when we, um, when we, when the first RFP for Measure H was made available, the county was, was pushed, um, was, um, pushing uh, regional partnerships and there's uh, benefits to, to that, um, uh, higher, higher budgets and so forth. And so we had a history of working with Azusa, Glendora, Covina um, as, through our MET team as well as the uh, HALO team, which we, we once had. And so we got into a collaborative with those folks as well as Duarte. And uh, my proposal was put together with significant help uh, from a uh, grant writer from the COG. And so uh, that, that proposal was submitted. Um, it, it was successful. Uh, we were required to put a cash match cash match together. Or there were matching funds. We ended up, uh, the budget was three, um, the grant was 343,250. Um, the, the match is some, a little over 291. Each of the, divided by five. Three hundred forty-three thousand. I'm sorry. Three hundred forty-three thousand. Correct for the five cities. That's five so that's cities. five city for five Duarte cities. So that's about Covina and Glendora. Glendora and Duarte Hills. So so, so seventy thousand per city, not based on. No, the, it wasn't even. It wasn't even. It wasn't not twenty percent across the board. Our percentage was less from what. Even I less. I, I'm sorry. He, he was asking if it was a flat 20% across the board. I said no. Because you based on $343,000 for five city, you divide five. So every, so every city is about $70,000. Roughly. 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 And uh, they don't care about the, the size of the city. For example, West Coast is much bigger. Okay, Azusa is smaller. Duarte is much, more, much smaller. So uh, everybody gets seven, seven, $70,000. Approximately. It depends on w what had happened during the course and of the year. We have the Some matching funds, so we have to come out $70,000. Uh, the matching funds, there was a um, there was an in-kind component, and each, each of the cities um, proposed an in-kind. Like, uh, they were going to be co-located at the, at the city halls or, or at a community center, and so we'd cost the space, the, the rent, um, uh, parking space, utilities, that sort of thing, and that we propose that as an in-kind of about $25,000 per, per city. And then the balance of the match was uh, covered by cash. So each of the cities put in, uh, were committed to $33,000 in, in cash. So that, that was part of the proposal. My, my understanding, okay, and the Union Station is a private company that, that they kind of uh, doing this service, okay, using the some major age money and the city matching fund to operate, and they should have a, a office in West Covina, right? So if we have a, and they provide housing, right? Okay, like a, like a voucher for them to go to the hotel, motel. Yeah, that's one of the things that they do. What we, we asked them to do was to, to come out here, do some outreach, uh, be able to uh, get people into that coordinated entry system, do the assessments, uh, and, and get them in, and there is a, uh, a, a, a tiering as to how, how they can move them along in housing plans. And so they did, once they established a, a caseload, they, they would manage those cases. And so that, that's what they continue to do. How, how, how we, okay, can verify the accountability about what kind of service? Do we have a report about how many people they help out in West Covina? How many homeless people we help? by their agency to, to give them some temporary shelters or housing? 
Do we have any report for that? Yes, they provide quarterly reports that are submitted submitted to the county. To, to, to the chief, to the police? So to or to, to the county, to us, and then the cities, and the cities, cities are, uh, receive those as well. Okay, so, so how can we verify, okay, the, 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 okay, the performance of uh, their accountability that they're doing, helping the homeless in our area? Because last time I'm, I went through a uh, while south side of a, a, a lady, they're homeless and they're looking for help. She didn't get help. And supposedly they would pick her up, but they didn't. So, so, so that's why I want to find out what, why is the problem? So can we make sure this is the system, okay, don't have this kind of uh, issue that somebody say, hey, can I, can I get a shelter? I'm willing to get help. Okay, and uh, we called the, seat, the, the the police called the union station, and they said they would pick up one o'clock. But they come, they show up, only give them food, gave her food. They said she was in the Friendship Park. So, so how can we avoid potential issue like this? What, where is the accountability for this entity that we can get this thing and they can provide service? Well, uh, to to provide housing, shelter, that sort of thing, the the housing has to be available. Uh, they do have a, a contracts with a number of uh, motels, uh, and some of the folks they want, most of the folks want to stay in the area. They they don't they'll have uh, uh, spaces downtown, spaces in in San Bernardino, that sort of thing. Uh, they negotiated some some uh, uh, rooms for for the city, and then to be able to shelter, then uh, there there are various there are uh, three tiers I think. One's an emergency one. For the most part, you have to be following a a, a plan, uh, a housing plan to get move on into uh, how, uh, permanent housing. To so tonight, what you want is to approve, basically approve the same contract for this ICT to continue to do this program? Well, what, what we're asking for is just to, uh, to uh, the county extended the term. The, the, the programs that were funded by the county, uh, they, they started um, there was a delay in the start time because of the pandemic and, and various things. And so this, this isn't uh, anything new. This is an extension of the performance period. This was originally supposed to end at the end of February, they extended it once to June and now through the end of uh, 2021. And so we had already, we'd committed to the match, the other cities did, and the, the, the cash match was originally for supplies. We hadn't had any experience with that, so uh, with putting one of these things it's possible together. next time we can invite the, the state, uh, union station staff to kind of uh, kind of uh, discuss with us, so we, at least we can identify who is the person in, in charge in West Covina area. We have somebody we yes. have, right? Yes, we do. Why why he or she didn't show up today to kind of talk to us? I think we request already. We, we t asked through the chair, we did ask um, when we learned that this item was going to be pulled off the consent calendar for discussion, we made an inquiry if they could come tonight, but evidently they were unavailable at that much notice. I don't know if they'd be available at a future meeting. I imagine they would, we, but we we, I didn't give them a lot of notice. I did get a hold of them, or I mean, Kelly did today. I have additional questions, like when was the official start time or start date? Because uh, I know you said postponement, all this stuff. Do you, do you have those answers? I mean, I have additional questions, but mm -hmm. would you be able to provide them all? Our, uh, our uh, housing navigator was onboarded in uh, February of, uh, February of uh, 2020, I believe. Yeah, I, re so I think I remember that because they were going to be housed here at a city hall, and then they were talking about debates of right. uh, when services will be rendered, how often, when she's going to be here, but all that... Um, I don't know what has come from since then. Um, but when she came on board, did services begin? Or? Yes. yes. Well, there was a week, week of training, and then she went out into the field. And so that's so 2020. We're, um, can we see the stats of, like, how many residents was, you know, contacted, taken, performance, just sure, everything? Certainly. Um, she has that then, right? I mean, I'd like... I'd like more information of what exactly is um, being carried through. Uh, I do remember last year I spoke to one um, person that, you know, they're homeless and, you know, they, that we had the homeless shelter, I mean, the motel vouchers, but 
something that it was exhausted, and I wanted to know, are the motel vouchers pretty much on the fiscal impact? I'm looking at the um, accounts, the law enforcement outreach, the cleanup, the motel vouchers, the housing navigation grant, all this amount, um, this is the amount shared for all five city entities? No, the, the, uh, under the fiscal impact, the, the, those are uh, additional things that we're carrying over from the previous year. These, these are specifically for, uh, for West Covina. Uh, and th those were received through um, some of them through the COG, the law enforcement outreach, the encampment cleanup, uh, and the motel vouchers. A portion of those, and those are specific. Hey, do for we West have Carolina. an urgency? We have to approve this tonight because I prefer. Okay, make a motion to table this. We have collect more information. Second. Okay, and we can invite. Okay, the station union staff to come over here to give us some presentation. Yes, three hundred forty thousand is not another money for spread to five city, but still money. It's still a service, and we really want to know the service. Okay, and how can we help the people on the street? They can, if they need help, they can be helped. Right. Okay, so so I think this that's why we I think we're serious about this. Okay, and uh, we want to know how can we work together, and really not just a station union West Covina, but really perform something to help the people on the street. Make sense? Can we do that? Certainly, certainly we can invite them so back. I move the motion table. to table. You have a second. I, you want, want you want to say that the the three forty three is already. That's I understand, but at least we can invite. Okay, the station union give a presentation, and then we see. How can we, what kind of uh, lag, okay, or so, why sometimes we don't have enough service? Why Just the breakdown and how, like, how, are, how is it divided among us five cities? I mean, there's five si different cities with different needs and, you know, where one could have more of a homeless issue. And does that divert that to this? So we just want to see a bigger picture of sure. what's going on. No, we don't want to just approve something, approve, okay, and we really want to see how we can entice or improve Okay, the service for homeless, and they, they set up the station union to help the homeless for them to have some service. And then we want to question about this, okay, entity, and to in West Covina to see how can we improve the service, okay, what kind of service they have been done, okay, and uh, we want to work together, the city and the, the station union. And hopefully, if uh, if not enough, then we will find some funding to help them, okay, or something, right? Right. Okay, I, I already moved the motion. So I have a motion by Councilman Wu and a second by Mayor Pro Tim Castellanos to table this item to a future council meeting. Council Member Tabat Council Member Tabatabai? Aye. Councilman Wu? Aye. Councilwoman Diaz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tim Castellanos? Aye. Mayor Lopez Viado. I motion passes five zero. Um, that ends consent calendar. <laughs> Is there a council member report? City Council request? I'm sorry, it's, this is the earliest so that I've been This is the first time AO call. Going once, twice? No, not yet. I have, no, to, I have, to have something. Sorry. City Council comments? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Councilman Tabatabai. I just wanted to, to say uh, thank you to Covina Valley Unified uh, and West Covina uh, Unified for uh, putting on a great Kings of Cameron uh, football game on Saturday. It was a fantastic event. All of the South Hills and West Covina community was out there completely sold out. The student sections were awesome. Uh, and since my son is in West Covina Unified, I just wanted to show the Bulldogs <laughs> some love. So there you go. West Co Bulldogs uh, won. They're the Kings of Cameron. Uh, sorry, Counts uh, Mayor Pro Tem Castellanos. <laughs> you guys got this one. <laughs> okay, I, I have, uh, okay, we got in the... Okay, as city council requests, okay, I, I think I, a lot of uh, residents, okay, have uh, requests and complaints, city manager, regarding, okay, uh, the communication, okay, about the event. Okay, a lot of time uh, I post what's going on. They say, what the heck, you post that thing? Okay, you, you post after it's over? No, we, we just received maybe a two, two day prior. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we need to, I know the pandemic, and now we kind of uh, on and off the pandemic, so I understand this a little bit, okay, uh, on and off, but we need to kind of starting, kind of uh, get this, okay, and uh, uh, communication. And I, I hear, I have, 
uh, my collection. Okay, I love this. Okay, <laughs> Discover with Corvina. I love is, those too. I remember. Uh, 2007. Okay, 2007. Discover with Corvina, and my wife kept almost okay everything. Amazing. Okay, this oh, is a amazing. quarterly. Have a lot of history, a lot of information. So I think I collect almost 30 years of uh, this thing, and it stopped in 2017, 18, the budget crisis on the previous, okay, um, okay, city manager. And then this one, okay, this one is, they later on used, this one replaced the uh, Discover West Covina, hopefully, okay, we can receive, I don't know the budget, but maybe city manager can look into it, and the Robin can see if we can afford it. Okay, maybe we can use the ad sponsorship. And this one is, uh, Discover West Covina with a lot of a senior program, okay, with a lot of uh, what's going on, okay, on our senior. So since we are going to go to the, facing the 2022, I think maybe we need to kind of look into it so our resident can know what kind of event so they can prepare, they can attend this and that. And in the meantime, I know a lot of things right now currently people depend on electronic, okay, the website, the social media. So how can we, okay, branding ourselves Okay, I think uh, West Covina PD doing a good job. I see they promote like crazy about what's going on, okay, their weekly report. And I think West Covina City should follow the footsteps of West Covina PD doing the same thing and okay, promote what's going on in the city so residents can know, okay, what event, where to go to. Okay, in that way, we can have a sense of community. So this is my request, okay, to make sure this thing can be, okay, and execute ASAP, because right now it's October, then November, and the year's over, blink of your eye, then we face in 2022. So hopefully in 2022, we starting, okay, bring back old history, okay, so I can collect all these items again. Okay, thank you. I agree, you make a great point. Our PD has been doing a wonderful job of disseminating information via social media. Our fire department has too, so thank you guys. We asked and they listened, so keep it up, please. We appreciate it, and we'll follow suit with disseminating information from City Hall. Thank you, Council Member Wu. Okay, so City Manager, City Manager wanted to say something? Well, I, I know I've requested the uh, If I may, website. Mayor. Um, this has been one of the priority projects for several people, and especially my mayor. Um, we did issue an RFP and got a number of proposals in. Those are being reviewed now, uh, literally today, uh, this week. And um, we'll have a top rank firm and a contract, which comes with it, the cost of it, to council for your consideration and review. But this is an area where the city uh, cut back, used to do the Discover Magazine four times a year, back in the day when print media was the thing. Well, it's usually we add tasks to the, the new era. Um, a lot of cities are doing much more than we are. I um, saw a presentation by the public media team from the city of West Hollywood. They have a dedicated staff of 13 people in their city hall does nothing but this. They, they Instagram and they Facebook and they tweet and they, I don't know what all they do. But it's a world that has a voracious appetite and you have to feed it and you have to feed it constantly. There's a lot of good things happening, but you have to, you have to tell your story. I think to do the comps properly, we're going to be looking at um, a communications program done well, um, north of $10,000 a month. So you're, you're going to get to see what you get for that amount of money when we bring you the top-ranked firm and a recommendation for about it. But um, that will be on a, an agenda near you soon. We're, um, we're working it up right now. Thank you. Anything else? Oh. Well, then that concludes our meeting. And... I adjourn. That's it. <laughs> Done. <laughs>